My goal for this video is to get you to start doing DMEC if you're not already doing it yourself. And there are lots of great cornea specialists who are phenomenal surgeons who do DSEC exclusively who haven't switched over yet because they're worried about their first few cases, about starting with a new technique. But you know, the risk of doing DMEC is actually really, really low. There are very few things that can go really badly wrong and it's almost always fixable after the operation. The only real risk is actually not starting with some new surgical technique. If five or 10 years from now you look back and you're still doing the old stuff, um, then that's the only real practice killer in my opinion is not progressing, not moving forward. And you know, patients are so understanding, you know, lots of people, what they want is the very best thing. And if you tell patients, well, there's this new surgical technique and we think it offers these advantages, but you know, it may not be possible or we may not be able to pull it off. You'd be shocked about the number of patients who say, okay, well doc, let's try it. And if it doesn't work, we can always go do a DSEC after that. So I think it's a really easy thing. Patients are super understanding when you want to do the technique. And uh, the point of this video is to give you a a few little tips for how you can get started. Um, the video we're going to use for uh, purposes of explanation is an old video that we dug up from the archives. This was a case that I was doing six or seven years ago uh, when I was not that far into doing DMEC myself. And so this shows all of the training wheels that we used to use in order to do the operation. Um, the patient selection is ideally probably a 50 or 60 year old patient who's pseudophagic and maybe has Fuchs dystrophy. That way the anatomy is not too complicated of the eye. The anesthesia, you can use topical, you can use subtenons. We used to use retrobulbar. And so this is an eye that's got great anesthesia and akinesia and the eye is even propped up a little bit. It's elevated, which makes it easy to access. So the first thing I did was just dry the epithelial surface with a Wexel sponge and then used an eight millimeter tree fine just to make an epithelial impression on the surface of the cornea so I know where to center the graft. And then I'm marking where I'm gonna put my paracentesis. I've got three paras and one extra mark, which is marking actually for my decimetorexis. Now decimetorexis, stripping the decimase membrane, I like to do it under air. And so the way that we're injecting air into the eye is I'm using a long 27 gauge viscoelastic cannula and I'm depressing the paracentesis while I inject. And the reason that you wanna do that is that evacuates all of the aqueous from the anterior chamber when you burp that wound. And as you slowly inject air, it allows you to replace that fluid volume with air. So you can get 100% air fill. You can get all that little rim of aqueous out of the eye. So you get a full air fill, but the eye is not pressurized. It's still a soft eye. And that's great. It's really useful to have a soft eye because then your decimetorexis can be done without worry about worrying about the air wanting to squirt out of a firmly pressurized eye. So now we've got the anterior chamber filled with air and the eye is soft. So I'm gonna hold the eye here with some utility forceps just to stabilize the eye. And I'm gonna start at that little purple mark that I made and I'm gonna strip all around with this inverted Sinsky hook under air. And I think air is the very best way to do this rather than with saline or with viscoelastic because your visibility is better with air. You can just see the decimase membrane. You can see where you've scored. You can see where you've stripped so much better with air than with anything else. And that's important with DMEC because if the graft overlaps the edges of the unstripped area, then you tend to get detachments in those areas. And so I think that it's easiest to tell where you've been and what you've stripped if you do this under air. And it's important to use a larger diameter decimetorexis. You know, with DSEC, sometimes you just strip this central six millimeter zone, but with DMEC, you want to strip outside of the area where you're putting the graft in. Um, and you'll notice when I lose that air fill, I pull a little too hard, I distort the paracentesis and the air escapes, and you can see how much worse the visibility is. So you're so much more likely to leave little remnants behind which frustrate your life after the operation in terms of detachments. If you'll just fill the eye using air 
and strip under air. But, you know, we're lucky the graft comes off all in one piece here, so we just removed it from the eye with the paracentesis. And now, just to make sure I got it all, I'll put more air back in the anterior chamber, and I'll just sort of look. I'll just look to see if there are any little tags or remnants left behind. Uh, one thing I used to do is I used to turn the microscope light off and then use this little light pipe, and I would shine it around. I would cast shadows from different vantage points and just see whether I could catch a little glimpse or glimmer of any little remnant piece left behind. There doesn't seem to be any, so we can proceed with the next step. Now I'll just make the main wound. This is a three millimeter keratome. You can use whatever keratome size you want. Actually, I think it's better to use a bigger wound rather than a smaller wound because it's just easier to get the injector into and out of. So once I've made the wound, I'm going to remove air from the anterior chamber and replace that air with saline. So I'll deepen the anterior chamber back with saline and now it's time to make an iridotomy. You can make an iridotomy in a thousand different ways. By far the easiest way is by using a vitrectomy handpiece. This is a 25 gauge vitrectomy handpiece. I just make two little iridotomies. I just maneuver it down into the inferior peripheral iris. And you can just, you can make one or you can make two. I used to make two just to give myself some extra assurance that the we were not going to get a pupillary block. And I do that under fluid as opposed to with air because you can see what you're doing better. But you don't get any bleeding the vast majority of times and it's simple and one-handed. I'm injecting the graft into the eye. That was with a glass dork D-O-R-C injection cannula uh, or injector system. I, I used that because number one, that's the way I learned how to do DMEC. Um, dork is a Dutch company and I, I learned how to do DMEC in Holland and that's what we used over there. But the reason I've stuck with it is because as opposed to any other injector system like a goiter system, for example, this delivers a very minimal volume of fluid into the eye. So you've seen some DMEC videos, you inject the graft into the eye and then you have to worry about removing the injector because the graft wants to wash out. Well, it's because so much fluid is injected. So if you use this injector, you don't get very much fluid going to the eye also. So there's very little pressure in the eye that wants to wash the graft out. So once the graft is in, always the very first thing you do is remove these bubbles because these bubbles just sort of push the graft out of the way. They prevent you from unfolding it. And then you sort of deepen the chamber with more saline. Now there, the bubble snuck back in again. So you just remove it again. Okay, now the graft is a little bit wadded up. The chamber is a little bit shallow. So you just deepen the chamber with saline. And now you want to verify whether the graft is right side up or upside down. That's always the first step. Here, we're not using an orientation mark. If you want to use one, that's fine. But the first thing you do before you start the elaborate dance or ritual of trying to do taps on the corneal surface is you want to make sure that the graft is right side up, okay? So you deepen the chamber and you look at the orientation of the curls. The curls should be up if the graft is right side up. And the curls are down if the graft is upside down. So sometimes you can check that with visual inspection. Garrett Mellis's brilliant observation is you can check what's called the Motsuro sign. You put the cannula on top of the graft and you maneuver it over into the curl and see if you can get it to engage with the curl. And if the curl is right side up, it'll interact with the cannula. And if the curl is upside down, then the cannula will be on top of the curl and you won't really be able to interact with it. So you deepen the chamber to get the graft to mobilize a bit once you inject and then you try to see whether it's right side up or upside down before you start unfolding it. Okay, so here the graft seems like it may be right side up to me. So I'm going to put some taps on the corneal surface and we're going to check the Motsuro sign. So I'm going in through a paracentesis in this case and I'm going to interact with the edge of the curl. Uh, there we go, it's right side up. And then now you can just sort of poke the graft over if you want. You know, there's lots of talk about a no-touch technique to open a graft, but really it's okay to be uh, a little bit gentle and to touch the tissue. So once you have the graft centered in the eye, even with a direct manipulation, you can just apply some taps on the corneal surface and the graft unfolds. 
So once you have the graft unfolded on top of the iris, then you can put an air bubble into the eye. Here we are putting an air bubble underneath the graft and lifting it up to the posterior corneal surface. And now just to pressurize the anterior chamber with more air. So here we go, that's the end of the case. You'll notice that there's just barely a little fluid meniscus you can see around the edges of the cornea, way out the limbus, you can detect a little bit of meniscus. What this means is that the graft is well supported even when the patient is not lying flat. Even when they're standing up, the air bubble occupies all of the space on the back of the cornea, way down even below where the graft is attached. So the patients really don't need to lie supine in recovery or at home. So this was a DMEC taken from our archives maybe six or seven years ago. That's when we were doing things a lot different than we are now with a lot of steps now that we don't include anymore. But even then, during basically what was our learning curve of the operation, that is a four and a half minute long surgical video that shows the whole operation from front to beginning. So really, if you're intimidated about starting with DMEC, you really shouldn't be. Uh, the simple fact of the matter is this is an operation that's way less technically demanding than FACO. It's way faster to do than DSEC in the vast majority of cases because there's not so much extra stuff you have to do. Patients are super enthusiastic about having the newest and the best operation. So if you're worried about whether or not um, this is something that you can comfortably add to your skill set, you really shouldn't be because the odds are you're doing way more difficult and complicated stuff on a daily basis than this. And the last point that I can make is that if, if there's anything I can do to help you get started with doing DMEC in your practice, just call us. That's what we do is we teach people how to do this operation. So um, I think that if we can be of any assistance to you in getting off the ground with this surgery for your patients, let us know.